I have consulted electricians, electric engineers, and other people in the biomedical field. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to test the quality of the ground of your house and also your grounding rod. So why is a doctor teaching you electrical principles? Well, there are people who are using the house ground and also a grounding rod outside to ground the human body. Now, before you start to say, what the heck, there are scientific papers to show that grounding the human body has health benefits. So if you're curious about the health benefits of grounding a human body, please go see this video here. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the X-Tech ground resistance meter and this sucker is about $200 but totally worth it. So the purpose of my videos are to give you better understanding. So these are instructional videos and definitely do them at your own risk. Ready? Let's get started. This is the X-Tech module and there's three cables that will plug into this. One is the ground and then there's a yellow lead and a red lead. Now you need the S-Tech because it can send out enough voltage to basically send it into the ground and it can actually detect the resistance in the ground itself. It can also actually test for voltage in the ground as well because we have ground voltage everywhere from the transformers that are across my street here as well as when power is returned back to the power companies, there are ground currents that are in the ground that are returning back to its source. So you have to test for ground currents to make sure that you're not using a grounding rod with a human body when there's a lot of ground currents available. So for $200, it's worth the peace of mind in order to know that you're grounding your body safely. My grounding rod for the home is close to where the electrical meter is and I have an electrical outlet that's close by the meter. I'm gonna use a meter to measure the resistance of the outlet ground to the other electrodes in the earth. We have to place the yellow and red electrodes at equidistance from each other. So I'm gonna pick 10 feet uh, for both of those. So it comes with stakes and we're gonna just pace it out for 10 feet and then we'll install the yellow and then another 10 feet for the red. So I want to plug the yellow into the yellow port, the red into the red port, the green into the ground port. Then I'm connecting the green to the outlet ground. So the green goes to the outlet ground. The yellow is an electrode that's about 10 feet out. The red is an electrode that's about 20 feet out. And so what I do here is I'm going to set it to 20 ohms and hit test. So my house ground is less than four ohms, which is outstanding because the NEC requires that the home should be grounded to the grounding rod that is less than 25 ohms and my house is four ohms or less, which is outstanding. That's a nice ground for the house. Now, speaking with and consulting with electric engineers and also electricians, this should be tested about every 10 years because the electrodes or the grounding rods to the house can actually corrode over time and lose their conductivity. That can be quite dangerous because if there's a lightning strike to your house or other electrical issues, there's not gonna be a good grounding system to drain that electrical energy and you can actually risk having a massive house fire and electrical problems from a lightning strike or massive electrical surge throughout the house electrical system. So even though it's a pain in the rear, this should be tested every 10 years and your grounding rods may have to be replaced. But for human grounding, this is extremely important. You want something definitely less than 25 ohms or less in order to ground your body using the electrical system. But you have to also check for stray currents in the grounding system. And so in my house, I can measure about 90 microamps of stray electrical current. Why does that matter? Well, According to research, one microamp of stray current that enters the body. Now, it doesn't have to enter just through the skin. It could be a break in your skin. It could be because you have dry skin and you have like cracks in your skin. It could be through mucosal membranes. One microamp of AC electricity can actually be linked to things like cancer and other major health problems. So you don't want stray current into your body and you don't want to plug in a grounding mat or a grounding product into an outlet that has stray current in the actual outlet ground. So you have to use a multimeter that can measure as low as one microamp 
of AC electricity in order to determine if your outlet is actually good to go. The three light receptacle is not adequate to tell you that your house is properly grounded for human body grounding. So what is the solution? If this is too complex for you, get a grounding rod. So let's use the X-Tech meter to see if my grounding rods are actually set up really well. Okay, I set up the X-Tech here next to my grounding rods and you can actually see that I have two grounding rods and I have one here and one here. These are only a foot long grounding rods and I know that's not adequate for home grounding. However, we're just grounding the human body. These are grounding rods from earthing.com but you can see that the plastic has worn off. It's still good. And so I've been using these grounding rods for over five years now. So I have the S-Tech ground lead connected to one of the grounding rods and then the red and yellow leads are down there at approximately five feet apart down that way. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on the, uh, the ground meter here, and then I'm gonna start at 20 ohms, and I'm gonna test it, and it doesn't respond, so I go to 200. It doesn't respond, I go to 2000. So my resistance from my grinding rod to the earth is roughly 964 ohms, which is under 1000 ohms, which is not bad. If you look at the earthing cable, there is a 100,000 ohm resistor in that cable itself. So 1000 ohms or less, is nothing. You can still get good grounding. So I find that if your earth grounding rod is less than a thousand or a few thousand ohms, it's not a big deal. Your skin, when it's wet, it's about a thousand ohms. Dry skin is up to a hundred thousand ohms. So really a few thousand ohms on the, the earthing rod is not a big deal. However, if you live in cold climates, you should also watch this video here where I discuss the freeze line your grounding rod has to be below the freeze line. I live in Florida, so the ground never freezes, and I can use a 12-inch grounding rod without a problem. But if you live in a place that has a lot of cold weather and it's extremely cold during the winter, you may need an eight-foot grounding rod in order to get below the freeze line. So it's really important to not have frozen ground with your grounding rod because frozen ground, like ice and snow, are not very conductive, as I show here in these images, where the ohms are in the several million ohms of resistance with ice and then with snow it's so much that my meter could not even measure it. So one last thing before we go, I'm going to show you how to test for ground currents. I mentioned how ground currents can be bad. So using this earth resistant tester we can actually look for ground currents. So we just turn to earth voltage zero. So this is below the detectable limits of this meter but there's no significant voltage that we can detect within the ground in this area. So using the grounding rods in this area is safe. Also, I'd like to use the grounding rods near plants. So putting the grounding rod next to plants, the soil is typically moist, conductive, and the roots go deep down. So you get better grounding with your grounding rod. Well, I hope this video has been helpful. Happy grounding. Well, thank you for joining me today. If you have any comments about my video or if you have ideas for future videos, please make sure you like, share, and comment below. Also, please hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss my future videos. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Thank you.